The sages said, O Sutta the fortunate, O Sutta the disciple of Vyas, obeisance be to you. This wonderfully sanctifying story of Shiva has been narrated today. The wonderful and highly divine origin of the Linga has been heard. Listening to its efficacy causes destruction of misery. O storehouse of mercy, please tell us the mode of the worship of Shiva in accordance with the conversation of Brahma and Narada, whereby Shiva becomes satisfied. Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishas, and Shudras worship Shiva. How shall the worship be performed? Please tell us in accordance with what you have learned from Vyasa. On hearing their words, Sutta narrated everything in answer to the question of the sages, everything conducive to welfare and in accordance with the Vedas. Sutta said, O lordly sages, your enquiry covers a great special secret topic. I shall explain it as far as my own intellect can penetrate it and in accordance with what I have heard. Formerly, Vyasa had asked the same question of Sanat Kumara as you have asked now. Upamanyu learnt it from him. It was directly heard from Upamanyu, the noble soul, by Krishna Dvaipayana Vyasa. Vyasa taught me the mode of worship of Shiva from a desire for the benefit of all the worlds. I shall tell you in that same way Brahma had said before. Brahma said, O sage Narada, I shall explain briefly the worship of the Linga, the phallic image. It is impossible to explain it in detail, even in a hundred years. In order to achieve the fulfillment of all desires, one should worship the pure and eternal form of Shiva with great devotion. Poverty, sickness, harassment from enemies, and the four sorts of sins trouble one only as long as one does not worship Shiva. When Shiva is worshipped, all miseries merge into the Lord, all happiness is secured, and salvation is attained thereafter. Shiva, who secures the achievement of all matters, shall be worshipped by the person who considers a continuous series of human pleasures very important. Whether they are brahmanas, kshatriyas, vaishas, or shudras, they shall perform the worship of Shiva duly and regularly for the achievement of all desired objects. One shall get up early in the morning during the Brahma Muhurta, about an hour and a half before dawn. He shall remember the preceptor and Shiva. O sage, he shall then remember the holy centers and meditate on Hari. Thereafter he shall remember me, the deities and the sages. Then he shall recite a prayer in the name of Shiva duly. Then he shall get up and evacuate his bowels in the southern quarter. The evacuation of the bowels shall be done in an isolated place. What I have heard in this respect I am mentioning now. O sage, please listen attentively. A brahmana shall use earth for cleaning purposes five times, a kshatriya four times, and a vaishya three times. A shudra shall use the earth twice for cleaning purposes, or he shall assiduously cleanse the rectum once and the penis once. He shall then wash the left hand ten times. He shall then wash each of the feet seven times and both the hands three times once again. Women shall perform these cleansing activities with earth like shudras. They shall first wash the hands and feet, then make use of the earth as before. They shall clean the teeth using the toothbrush twig according to their castes. The toothbrush twig of a brahmana shall be twelve angulas long. A kshatriya shall take one eleven angulas long, and a vaisha one ten angulas long. The toothbrush of a shudra shall be nine angulas in length. This is in accordance with smritis. What is enjoined by Manu shall be disobeyed only in emergencies. On Shashti, 6th, Navami, 9th, 
and new moon days on Sundays and days of sacred rites and shraddhas. Cleaning the teeth with toothbrush twig is prohibited. The daily ablutions shall be performed duly, and those in holy centers shall be performed with mantras in accordance with the time and place. Performing Achaman first, wearing washed cloth, he shall perform the Sandhya prayer in a good isolated place. After observing the preliminaries duly, he shall enter the chamber of worship, keeping the mind steady, and begin the rites of worship. Sitting on a good seat and performing nyasa, etc., in accordance with the prescribed rules of worship, he shall perform the worship of Shiva duly. Ganesh, the attendants at the threshold of the temple, the guardians of the quarters, etc., shall be worshipped, and thereafter the pedestal shall be arranged. Or he shall make the yantra, mystical diagram, of the lotus of eight petals, and install Shiva in its middle. He himself shall sit nearby with all the materials of worship around him. He shall perform achaman thrice and wash the hands. He shall then perform pranayama, suppression of breath, thrice. Then triambaka, three-eyed Shiva, shall be meditated upon in the following manner. The deity has five faces, ten arms, all kinds of ornaments, and a tiger hide as his upper cloth. He is as pure as crystal. During meditation, he shall identify himself with Shiva and burn off his sins. Having thus created the form of Shiva in meditation, he shall worship Lord Shiva. Then, the ritualistic purification of the body by touching the various parts of the body with holy water shall be performed. The nyasa of the mula mantra, root mantra, and that of the six angas with pranava, aunkar, shall be performed thereafter. After ritualistically touching the heart, he shall start worship. Different vessels shall be set apart for padya, water for washing the feet, Argya, water for the reception of the guest, and Achamana, sipping water. Nine vessels of different sizes should be kept by the sensible devotee. Darbha grass shall be spread and cool water sprinkled over these vessels with Darbha grass. Reciting the Aumkara, the intelligent devotee shall sprinkle the various materials of worship. The fragrant root of the Ushira plant and sandalwood paste shall be put in the water for washing feet. Fine powders of jati, kankola, karpura, root of vata, and tamalaka should be put in the water intended for sipping. Sandalwood powder shall be put in all these nine vessels. Nandisha, the divine bull of Shiva, shall be worshipped beside the Lord. The latter shall be worshipped with scents, incense, and different lamps. The linga shall be purified and installed with various mantras, beginning with pranava and ending with namaha, obeisance. The pedestal in the form of svastika or lotus shall be assigned with pranava. In the eight petals, in the eight quarters, the eight achievements are identified. The eastern petal is anima, minuteness, the southern is Lagima, lightness. The western is Mahima, greatness. The northern is Prapti, power of reaching. The southeastern is Prakamya, power of sufficiency. The southwestern is Ishitva, lordliness. The northwestern is Vashitva, power of control. The northeastern is Sarvagnatva, omniscience and the pericarp is the moon, Soma. Beneath the moon is the sun, and beneath that is the fire. Dharma, etc., are beneath that. All these shall be assigned regularly. In the four quarters, Avyakta, the unmanifest principle, and in the end of Soma, the three gunas shall be assigned. Lord Shiva shall be invoked by the formula, 
I am addressing Sadyojata. Then the devotee shall repeat Vamadev mantra and stand on his seat. The Sanidya rite shall be performed with Rudra Gayatri mantra and the rite of Nirodha shall be performed with Aghora mantra. Rudra shall be worshipped with the mantra Ishana Sarvavidyanam, etc. Padya, Achamaniya, and Argya shall be offered duly. Rudra shall be duly bathed with water, scented with sandalwood in the same manner as with Panchagavya, after taking it in a vessel duly instilled with mantras. Then, invoking Pranava, the deity shall be bathed with cow's milk, curds, honey, and sugarcane juice. Worshipping Rudra, who bestows everything that is wholesome and desirable, with ghee, the devotee shall perform the Abhishek with all materials of worship, reciting Pranava. In the holy vessels full of water, he shall pour water, reciting various mantras after duly straining it with a white cloth. The sprinkling need not be performed until sandalwood paste is mixed. Then, raw rice grains, made beautiful by adding turmeric powder, etc., shall be offered joyously to Shankara. Offerings of flowers, especially white flowers and rare flowers, shall be made to Lord Shiva. Flowers of Apamarga, Karpura, Jati, Champaka, Kusha, Patala, Karavira, Malika, Kamala, Lotus, and Utpalas, lilies of various sorts, shall be used. When water is poured, it shall be poured in a continuous stream. Vessels of different varieties shall be used for the ceremonial ablution of Lord Rudra. Worship performed with due recitation of mantras bestows all benefits. O oh, dear one, I shall tell you briefly those mantras for the sure achievement of all cherished desires. Please listen attentively. Offerings of flowers and water ablutions shall be made with these mantras, whether caused to be read or committed to memory and orally repeated. The Rudra Mantra, Nila Rudra Mantra, Shukla Yajurveda Mantras, Auspicious Hotri Mantras, Atarvashirsha mantras, Shanti mantras, Maruta mantras, Samaveda mantras, if desired, Deva Vrata mantras, Ratantara mantras with Pushpa Suktas, Mrityunjaya mantras, and the five syllabled mantra. The water offerings shall be a thousand times or hundred and eight times. They shall be offered strictly in accordance with Vedic injunctions or by repeating the names of the deity. Sandalwood paste shall be applied to the deity and flowers placed over the idol. Sweet-smelling cloves, etc., shall be offered with pranava. Shivalinga shall be worshipped next. The Lord is pure as crystal, the unsullied, the undecaying, the cause of all worlds, the Supreme Lord identifying with the created world. The Lord who cannot be seen by Brahma, Indra, Upendra, Vishnu, and other deities. The Lord who is mentioned in Vedanta by those who know Vedas as the incomprehensible. The Lord who has no beginning, middle, or end. The panacea for all sick patients. And who is renowned as Shiva Tattva. The worship of the Linga shall be performed by Pranava Mantra alone. Incense, lamps, naivedya, good betel leaves, pleasant nirajana, waving of lights, shall be duly offered. Prayers, obeisance, etc., with various mantras shall be performed. Argya and flower offerings shall be made at the foot. The devotee shall kneel down and devoutly pray to the Lord. The devotee shall take some flowers in his hands, stand up with palms joined in reverence, and repeating the following mantra shall pray again to Ishana, Shankara. O Shiva, may this japa, puja, etc. performed by me, with or without the requisite knowledge, be fruitful, thanks to thy grace. 
After repeating the above mantra, he shall place the flowers joyously over the Shivalinga. Then the rites of Svastyatyana, Ashirvada, benediction, and Marjana shall be performed. Then, homage, a prayer for forgiveness, and achaman shall be performed. Repeating the Agha mantras for the expiation of sins, namaskara shall be duly performed. He shall pray with devout feelings. Devotion to Shiva, devotion to Shiva, devotion to Shiva in every birth. I have no other refuge. You alone are my refuge. After praying thus to the Lord of the gods, the bestower of all achievements, the devotee shall loudly pray. He shall then perform namaskara along with the members of his family. He shall feel delighted in all these, and thereafter carry on his daily routine according to convenience. He who performs the worship regularly like this with great devotion to Shiva shall achieve success at every step. He will become eloquent. He will achieve all he desires. The Supreme Lord Shiva will quell all his miseries, ailments, sorrows, heartburns, crookedness, poisonings, and everything distressing quickly. Just as the moon waxes in the bright half, his joy and merits certainly shall increase day by day by the worship of Shiva. O foremost among sages, Thus I have told you the mode of worship of Shiva. O Narada, what else do you wish to hear?